watching the Miracle Report here on your Miracle Moment. It's day one of the Passover conference and it's been such an amazing conference with such amazing message already. Now I'm joined by Sister Marie. Now, will you share with us uh, what made you come to this conference? I've been watching these programs and that, and then I went to Faith on Fire and he was there. And I've just been wanting to come to, and then you advertised the whole weekend for Easter. And then I felt, no, I needed to come. Then Pastor Someone said, here has got a problem with the right-hand side kidney. Right in the right hand side. And I kidney. sat and I thought, no, that's me. That's me. And I said to my friend, that's me. And she knows my problem. And that's when I went up. Watch, watch how easy it is for Jesus to heal you. Amen? It's so simple for Jesus to heal people. He can heal your kidneys in a second, heal your heart in a second. Because He's real. He's real. He's real. Did it on the cross 2,000 years ago. What am I doing? I'm just making the exchange. I'm the courier guy. I'm the courier guy. The power is not inside me. I can never heal anybody. I'm just the courier guy. I just take the sickness, send it back to the cross. Because that's, that's where it got healed. Amen? I have to make the exchange. Sit your hands towards her. She, she's going to get healed right now. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing this. Ah, oh, 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 there we go. That's a severe infection. I curse the infection. I curse it. I curse it. I curse it. In the name of Jesus, I command brand new kidney, yeah? Brand new kidney. Brand new kidney. Brand new kidney. Brand new kidney. <laughs> you went on stage. Did you feel, was it discomfort? Just Look at me, sweetie. I just felt that I had that slight oh, pain oh, and okay, next minute it, bit, that'll all be gone. Bend on. Paul said I must bend over and when Ooh. I did, usually <laughs> I get <laughs> a pain and what happened? And it's healed. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. And you were in a lot of pain right now. It was like a burning, like a burning pain. And what happened now when when we prayed for you? It's God. The pain's gone. I thanks God. I'm healed. Amen. So what actually happened is it was infected and it also was a little bit enlarged. That's where all, it was pressing on something else. Yeah, it doesn't work. It, it, sometimes it will be all right and then all of a sudden it comes. Yeah. Just, yeah, but it's, it, was, it was very, yeah. it, it was very, very severe. Yeah. Now, you say, how do you know all that? Because that's how the word of knowledge works. See, when the word of knowledge comes, I get the same condition that, in this case, that you got. I feel the same pain in the same spot. I feel the same intensity that you feel. So when somebody says, hey, I'm not healed, or somebody says, I'm healed, and I know if they're healed or not because when the pain leaves me, that's when you get healed. See? So not only do I feel the intensity, but then sometimes I see the organ, and I see if it's inflamed, it's enlarged. If, if, I, if I pray for people's spine, I see each vertebrae, I see what, what's wrong with the ligaments, what's wrong with the cartilages, then I see God growing it because that's how he heals. That's just the gifting that, that I operate in. So today, there's no more need for the gynae operation <laughs> or the gynae interview. Hey Amen, isn't God good? What did we do? Was we took that sickness. I'm the courier guy. Tell your neighbor the pastor is the courier guy. All I did was take it back to the cross because it was healed on the cross. That's all. That's all. See, too, long, too often we stress with unnecessary, sometimes stupidity. Yeah. You want God to heal you? You must have so much of faith. You need to fast and pray for at least four months. Then you'll get healed. No. No, 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 no. You got healed on the cross. You need to learn how to do the exchange. That's what you need to do. You need to learn how to do the exchange. No one will suffer from sickness if they understood what happened on the cross. 
Amen. Praise God. So join us for our events and our conferences. Come visit us at the Miracle Center. Check out our social media where you can catch these episodes and the testimonies from your miracle moment, such as on our YouTube channel. And stay tuned and remember that miracles are normal. So this girl had a high end shoe, and, it, and her leg was at least 15 to 20 centimeters short. So they carry this girl on the stage, and they say, pray for her. I'm thinking, oh my God, how do I get out of this? Because it's so cool to preach. It's a whole different thing to operate in what you're preaching. You know, when you're a young Christian, you're a baby Christian, you, know, you, you think like this. So anyway... It so happened that I had been to a, to a miracle crusade uh, uh, by a famous evangelist. They had called him the Billy Graham of South Africa in those days. And I saw him pray for somebody whose leg was short, and I saw the leg grow. So I said, well, this is what I'll do. I'll pray for the girl, and, and I'll just see what happens. Uh, if, and, you know, and, and I really thought nothing's going to happen. So if, if the leg doesn't grow, I'll tell her it'll grow one of these days. <laughs> it's an easy cough out, isn't it? So here I am. They bring this girl on the stage, and I'm sitting down on the chair. And I said to him, okay, fine. Put her legs across my lap. And so everybody, now let's pray now. Let's pray, let's pray. So... I close my eyes because I don't want to see what's going on. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the prayer to be over <laughs> so I can get off the stage. So I'm sitting there, my legs closed, this girl, her legs are over my, my lap. My one hand is on the short leg kneecap. The other hand is on the other kneecap. So I said, guys, let's pray. So everyone's praying. I'm praying as well. Lord, grow this leg. And the next minute, as I'm praying, I stop praying because my hand started moving. So my hand is moving now. It's doing this here. And I'm shocked. I am shocked what's going on. I never expected it to happen. I'm to be honest with you. So the, leg, the hand moves, and then it meets the other hand. I said, whoa. And then it's not, stop, it's not stopping. The short leg now goes past the long leg. In my excitement, in my confusion, I'm saying, God, God, stop, stop. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Grow it back. And it stopped growing, and it goes back. And both the legs are equal. So, <laughs> it's easy to preach. But to operate in the supernatural is a whole different dimension. Since then, I prayed for, I think, at least over 10,000 people whose legs were short. And God has grown their legs, their hands, and so on. Because once you know it, it's very easy to grow legs. I was once preaching at one of the Kenneth Copeland uh, pastors' conferences, and, uh, and I, was, I was teaching them how to operate in the supernatural. Uh, one of the uh, pastor's wives had come in, 
and she had a leg that was very short. And as I just started talking, the leg just, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit does not wait for you. He just doesn't wait. He does his own thing. So when you're talking, you must talk quick. When we say, come on quickly, don't take your time. Because by the time you come out, he's already done his thing. Then it's too late. So while I'm talking, this leg just shoots out. Shocks me. Recently, there was a young girl that was here. Do you, I don't know if you guys remember it. And, and, and she was in the prayer line, and she had a leg that's short. That leg grew out so fast, uh, a, a short leg literally hopped. And hopped up in the air and came down. And everybody got shocked. She got shocked. I got a little shocked as well. But God can so easily do miracles. You see, the problem with us as Christians is we have become too religious in the supernatural. We've become too religious. Well, that kind of miracles, Pastor, only take place if you fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, you've got to be so spiritual, and then it'll happen. Oh, the praise and worship must be of a certain standard. If it's of that standard, then the supernatural will happen. No, 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 no. Jesus heals because it is who Christ is. It's who Christ is. It's who He is. Two things He did in His ministry. He went about preaching the good news about the kingdom. He said the kingdom of God is here. And the second thing He did is He went around healing the sick. Everywhere He went, Jesus healed the sick and preached the good news. And if I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, if I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, I need to do two things in my ministry. I need to heal the sick and preach the good news. Amen. Both are just as important. So let's get back to faith. And let's get back to real faith. Not that stuff like you, know, you must believe, 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 believe. How does faith work? What, are the, what is the mechanism behind faith? And how can one walk in faith? It's not difficult, first of all. Faith is not as difficult as people have made it out to be. So we talk about how to walk in faith. So the scripture that we're going to look at is 2 Corinthians 4, 13. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. It says, we have the same spirit of faith. So Paul says to those in Corinthians that we all have the same spirit of faith. What does that mean? It means you have the same spirit of faith that Paul had. You have the same spirit of faith that Peter had. You have the same spirit of faith that Jesus operated in. You have the same spirit of faith that Elijah operated in. You have the same spirit of faith. They don't have an advanced version of faith. What they have, you have. Oh, come on, somebody. To your neighbor, what they have, I have. You're watching The Miracle Report here on your Miracle Moment. I'm here with Sister Revealwe, and she has received a healing in her legs and in her back. Now, will you share with us, uh, you've been suffering with this pain for two weeks. Did you go to the doctor to find out what was happening? Yes, I did. I went to physio. I went to a medical doctor. They gave me all the possible uh, strongest medication, but they couldn't help me. Couldn't sleep at night. You know, the pain was all over my body. Day and night for two weeks, I was lying on the bed. This was really, really severe pain, and the medication wasn't helping. You couldn't sleep at all. Now, will you share with us, you came to the Miracle Center today for prayer. What happened? How does your legs feel now? When I left home, it was horrible. I had very bad pains. I didn't even think I could make it to come to church, but I told myself that I'm going to church. I'm going to get my healing. I've been prayed for and I'm completely, completely healed. And I bless the Lord for my healing. You in constant pain before. Is there any pain right now? Nothing, I can't even jump up and down. <laughs> Severe leg and back pain completely healed by the power of Jesus. So we encourage you to stay tuned to your miracle moment and you can rewatch this testimony and powerful testimonies like this. Just go to silvermudley.com forward slash YouTube, subscribe and remember that miracles are normal.
know the Lord will never fail. If there's one thing I know, it's that the Lord will never fail. It means you have the same spirit of faith that Paul had. You have the same spirit of faith that Peter had. You have the same spirit of faith that Jesus operated in. You have the same spirit of faith that Elijah operated in. You have the same spirit of faith. They don't have an advanced version of faith. What they have, you have. Oh, come on, somebody. To your neighbor, what they have, I have. I was, I was reading about how did people get healed in the shadow of Peter. And we were, those days, our midweek service was not on a, fri on a Wednesday night. It was on a Friday night. And, but we were still recording for TV in those days. We were on God TV those days. And... Uh, so I was reading during the day about how people got healed in the shadow of Peter. And so in the evening service, God said, I'll show you. Put all the lights off and leave the one spotlight on. So we did that. We put all the lights off. We put the one spotlight on. Then he said, hey, go stand in front of the spotlight. I went and did that, and my shadow went across half the stage. Then he said, listen, all those people that are sick that came in the meeting, tell them to go into the shadow. So they went to the shadow, and every single one of them got healed. Now, there's nothing, that wasn't me. I did nothing there. But the point is, and this is what he was teaching me. He said, listen, every miracle in the Bible and more you can operate in. There's no change of scenery. There's no change in God. He's the same God, Jesus is still alive. So fortunately, we recorded it. I think, I'm not sure if we put it on TV. I can't remember now. But we recorded it. Otherwise, no one will believe it. <laughs> the point I'm trying to get at is this. The same spirit of faith that Paul had, you have. We all have the same spirit of faith. So what is the difference between the faith Paul is operating in and the one we are operating in? Our faith has not been properly trained. We haven't trained our faith enough. So our faith is erratic faith. Do you have faith? Oh, yes, you have a lot of faith. But you have erratic faith. What do you mean by that? Well, let's say you're going for your driver's license. That's like one of the traumatic things in people's life, right? And, you, and everybody says, well, are you excited? And you say, I'm going to fail. Guess what happens? You go fail. Why? Why did you fail? Because you spoke bad words? No, simply this. It's true. We do speak bad words, and, and if they come from a believer, they have power. But the reason you failed is because you had faith that you would fail. I believe I will fail. That settles it. When you say, I won't make it, that's faith in action. It's faith. So what you've done is you've used your faith in the wrong direction. But it's faith that you exercised for failure. Because actually, you can't fail. <laughs> if you have Jesus in you, how can you ever fail? But unless you have faith to fail, then you'll fail. Oh, you don't get that. See, when you go to a doctor, and let's say you're going to go for an operation, and, and the nurse will come to you and say, how do you feel right now? Are you optimistic? And if, you, if you're pessimistic and you say, I, I won't make it through the operation, sometimes they won't actually have the operation. Why? Because you have faith that you're going to die. And because your faith is so powerful, you will die. No, no, you still didn't get it. The only thing that makes things happen is called faith. But faith can point in the wrong direction. When it points in the wrong direction, we have a word for it. We call, we call it unbelief. But unbelief is faith that it won't happen. 
So the stronger your unbelief, oh, I'm going to die from the sickness, oh, I'm going to fail, oh, this is going to happen. The stronger your unbelief, <laughs> the more the faith is exercised. Oh. Have you been around negative people? Some people are so negative they can kill a car battery. <laughs> Have you been around negative people? Have you become annoyed and irritated with negative people? Why have you become irritated with them? Because their faith is attacking your faith. Oh. You saying, let's go this way. And they're like the 10 spies, let's go that way. Let's go this way. No, no, let's go that way. So what is the problem with all these people? And, and you know, we, yeah, we're talking about Christians. What is the problem with them? They are using their faith wrongly because it's erratic faith. No one has matured them in how to clean up their faith and point it the right direction. There are two kinds of opposing faiths, if you want to call it. There's belief in one direction and unbelief in the other direction. So whichever direction you point your faith in is where you'll see manifestation. Whichever direction you point your faith in is where you'll see the manifestation. So this is why as a believer, you see, if you are not saved, it'll be great. Everything will be fine. But because you're saved, you are now accountable for unbelief. What? Yeah. You're accountable for unbelief. How am I accountable for my own unbelief? Jesus made an important statement. He said in Matthew chapter 12, be careful what you say. You'll have to give an account for every word that you say. Then he explains what he means. He says, because by your words you are justified, and by your words you are condemned. What does it mean? It means your own words build things, or your own word destroys things. So if you have been going around destroying things, you have to give an account for the stuff you destroyed. Come on, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You got to get this. Wait, 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 Pastor. Wait, wait, Pastor. I, what do you mean I'm destroying things? Well, you see, there's something very powerful Jesus said. He said, Did you know that Your Miracle Moment is one of the fastest growing Christian television programs coming out of the African continent? Every day, millions from over 137 countries on four continents watch our program on a multitude of television networks. We are on satellite networks all over the world. We are on cable TV. Plus, we are also on streaming media like Roku, and Apple TV and you can get our app. We are also on Christian magazines like the Joy magazine and we are on Christian radio. Every day we hear the most powerful testimonies of people's lives that are radically changed by this program. We get testimonies from every corner of the earth where that our program reaches. But there are still many that have not heard the gospel of Jesus. Our vision is to cover the entire earth with the good news 
and the demonstration of power so that multitudes come to the cross. We thank our partners that have helped us to become one of this fastest growing move of the Holy Spirit out of South Africa. But we need more partners to reach the rest of the world. So we invite you to partner with us. Help us to make a difference in these last days. When you partner with this program, you become a partaker of the grace. According to Philippians chapter 1, verses 5 to 7, you become a partaker of the anointing, the miracles, the signs and wonders, the healings, the deliverance, the salvations, the grace and the blessing. You become a partaker of that. So we invite you to partner with us today. We'd love to hear from you. Our details are on the screen. You can go to our website and pull in the partner application form, or you can call our office, or you can even email us. But join us in these last days. Join us as we take the gospel to places like Asia, where there is a multitude of millions and billions of people that need the gospel, that need what we have on this program. So thank you for helping us to make a difference. Thank you for partnering with us.